TV news story forms lecture. And in this lecture, we're going to look at the five basic story forms that make up a newscast. So readers is the smallest one, followed by voiceovers, which is what we just talked about in the last lecture. Voiceover sound, voiceover to sound on tape, um, which is a vocetto or vocetvo. Packages and donuts. So it goes the smallest, most basic story form, and then it grows. And then later we're going to look at an entire newscast. In the producing lecture, we'll look at how to create an entire newscast. Um, but let's start with the smallest story form called a reader. Um, a reader means that there's no video at all. So there's just an anchor on camera reading, like a one shot, or maybe they have an OTS, so maybe they have an over the shoulder graphic, but there's no graphic or video in front of their face. It's just them talking. Um, that's generally about 15 seconds to 20 seconds, and it's oftentimes used if there's a breaking news story. So if I'm in the booth as a producer, I'm producing a live newscast, and all of a sudden breaking news happens, I don't have time uh, or maybe even access to the video that would help tell that story. So I'm going to write a reader. Um, one common thing to include when you have a reader is called a stinger. Um, and if you look at this template for... Um, for what a reader looks like in the EPS, you notice this has a stinger, and then it goes to the reader right here. So stinger is like a branded graphic that goes across the screen, breaking news. So you've all seen that on CNN or other newscasts where you have something that's like big bold letters, this is breaking news, it often has some kind of sound with it, some urgent sound. Um, so in this example, this is a little tiny piece of EPS. We're gonna build on this throughout the semester that, so that you understand how to use this content management system. Very similar to iNews, but in this case I'm going to use EMPS because I think it's a little bit more common on the East Coast. Um, so in this case, here's the story slug. Because it's a breaking news reader, I just put breaking reader because it's a template um, that I added super fast. Then I put stinger. It's going to be a voiceover because my anchor is going to read, we have breaking news out of, you know, wherever the breaking news is. It's going to start right off the top, so it says FRTOP from top, the stinger immediately is going to start with breaking news. I'm not going to go to my anchor, she's not going to read breaking news, and then you see the stinger. It's going to be from the very top. In this case, my anchor is um, C, that was just Candace. So most of the time your anchor lines have like one letter or maybe their first and last initials, um, just so everybody knows who the anchor is reading that script. Um, and then this is just the writing column. For my shows, if I write my own story, or my own stories, I'll just Whenever I'm done writing it, I just put X's. Different stations use different techniques to show that the story is written. Uh, but that's what this is. Um, if you wanted to assign a writer, like let's say you're a intern and they say, hey, I want you to write this story, I'm gonna put you in for that, and they'll put your initials down. Um, but that's what this column is for. And then the estimated duration is how long, as a producer, I think the story is gonna last. Most readers, about 15 seconds long. And most stingers, about five seconds, maybe a little bit less. So in this case, Candace is reading, hey, we have breaking news out of San Diego, and then it comes back to her on camera. In this case, there's no video covering her, but we do have a graphic in the monitor. And as opposed to the OTSs that you guys saw in like the Florida Focus one, in this case, we had an actual monitor. So like this TV monitor, for example, that's a monitor. Most TV stations have something called a BAM, which stands for Big Ass Monitor. It's the biggest monitor in the studio. It's literally what they say, and that's what it's called. It's called the BAM. So Candace is standing by the big-ass monitor with a graphic in the monitor that usually says breaking news on it or something like that. So that's her reading, hey, we have breaking news out of San Diego. We just found out that blah, 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 blah. For 15 seconds, we'll give you more information when we find out. That's a reader. There's no video. There's no sound bites. It's just Candace on camera. Maybe has a stinger that says some kind of breaking news. Because most of the time, you don't want a reader unless it's breaking news. It exists, but you try to create more engaging video and, and soundbite story forms. Um, so this is a reader. Does everybody feel comfortable with what a reader is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next story form that's a little bit longer is called the VO. So VO is about 20 seconds. We looked at a template earlier. Here's another template for what a VO script looks like. It's slug. In this case, we're just going to have a one-shot, simple anchor on camera just by themselves. The anchor name is going to be there. Um, then the lead line is going to go here in capital letters. 
Of course, you're want, gonna wanna leave with impact, emotion, you know, next. Then the anchor is going to start talking when video covers their faces. So the video is gonna be full. The anchor will read the script here. If you're writing this, it should write to your video. Don't forget context, all of these other reminders. But that's the whole script. That's it. That's about 20 seconds long. So in EMPS, it looks like this. This is a 530 show. It's about road rage. It's a VO. It has a lower third, which is a graphic that comes across the bottom of the screen. In this case, I have Keith. He has an OTS. So he's going to start on camera. Right here, he's going to read the lead with an OTS. And then the video is going to come full screen. Uh, and the entire thing is about 20 seconds long. Does that make sense? OK. So now we go to the Bosat bow, which is um, sometimes just called the Bosat. That's a thing, too. You could just end after the sound bite. Um, but I like to use Bosat bows because the continued VO kind of helps you feel like it, it wraps it up a little bit. Um, so in this case, 40 to 45 seconds long, exact same template as the VO, but now you've added a sound bite and you've added continued VO. So this is about a 102-year-old person who just got their high school diploma. It's a VO with a lower third with an OTS. Keith is reading it for 20 seconds. Then Keith is going to shut his mouth, listen to the sound on tape for however many seconds that lasts. Then he's going to read the continued VO. And that's this, that's this template here. This whole thing, you just copy and paste if you want to save time. Um, I found it was really helpful as a producer to have like templates down below in my rundown and I would just like paste this into every script. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing when you're doing your projects. Save your time, just copy and paste my template and you can adjust them and be more creative. But for the most part, this is the template for a Bosat bow. Does everybody feel comfortable with what a Bosat bow is? We'll look at some examples um, also in a newscast so that we can identify the, the differences. The next biggest story form is called a package. So after this next project that you guys do with your Bosat bows, then you're going to create a package. So for this one, it's about 1 minute 20 seconds. Sometimes it's 1 minute 30 seconds long. It's one cohesive thing with several sound bites and reporter track. So a reporter package has reporters reading, then there's sound bites, then there's reporters reading more, covered by B-roll, then there's sound bites, then there's a reporter track, then there's sound bites. Sometimes there's also stand-ups, which is when the reporter is physically on camera talking about something on camera. That's a stand-up. Um, but we'll get into more of that um, later when we talk about reporter stand-ups. It could also be a whip, which is a package that's just shorter. So like generally, if somebody says, hey, I need a package for the five, and then I need you to make that a whip for the six, that means for the five, it should usually be about one minute, 20 seconds, or one minute, 30. Then I need you to make a shorter version of that exact same story that's about 50 seconds for the 6 p.m. show. But it's all tracked. So it has your reporter voice on it. It's one cohesive thing. It's not read live like a voice out is read live by an anchor. The package is read by a reporter. The anchor is in studio. Reporter's out doing reporting. Does that make sense? OK, so for this one, um, it's about 1 minute 20 seconds. And I'll show you guys like a donut script next. I wanted to show you the difference between the way you format this script. So every script has the slug at the top. It's the same thing. You make sure your story slug is at the top. Package, you just copy and paste that. Um, this is the command that tells the director the package is going to start playing. I like starting my packages with sound bites. I like having some kind of natural sound, some kind of sound bite of somebody talking. I don't love starting my sound or my package with a reporter talking right out the gate, unless it's a stand-up. Then it's an intro stand-up and it makes sense because the, the, the reporter standing there talking about, hey, this is the story I'm going to cover today. Uh, but most of the time, if it's a package, I like having some natural sound, kind of helps immerse you into the story right off the bat. Um, but you can switch these around. This is the um, VO here. This is the SOT, and it's just SOT VO, SOT VO, SOT VO, and you can move them however you need them to be. But this is the exact same template as the SOT that you find in the BOSAT bow, and this is the same exact thing as a VO right here, capital letters, 
capital letters are for the reporter or anchor to read, the lowercase letters are the quotes or the sound bites. It's important to keep these here, these little brackets, because it tells EMPS or iNews or the content management system that you're using to not count this time. So TRT will count that time. And by that I mean if you're doing a story for me, and I, like I put your name in the story and you're my reporter and you're going to go out and do that, I'm producing my show and I need to know before you're done with it how much time it's going to take. So I know how long you talk because I've recorded it. Everybody has a different read rate. I talk really fast. Maybe you talk slower than me. So if I have a script in there, I can't just assume it's going to be timed out perfectly. I need to know exactly how fast you talk. So everybody who's on air, an anchor or reporter, they calculate the read rates before you before they start their job. And then the producer should build little macros that should time them out in EMPS and iNews. So that when it's capital letters, it counts as you talking. But if it's a SOT, who knows how long the person's going to talk. Because let's say I have a soundbite of somebody, and they're talking, but then they pause for like 10 seconds to cry in the middle of it. And they continue talking for a second. It might look like it's only a couple seconds because there's only a few words there, but really it's like a long soundbite. So that's why it's important to put the TRTs, however long your soundbite is. Let's say that's 15 seconds. You want to put your 15 seconds here so that EMPS can calculate that, along with your voice, which is going to be the same speed generally most times. And then it'll add up in the content management system, and we'll go into that much deeper when we get to producing. But I want to just kind of explain a little bit, and if this is like totally confusing, don't worry, we'll get into that more depth a little bit later. But I just wanted to start explaining why these things are here. I'm not just making you do this because I like forcing you to do things. <laughs> but there's a reason why all of this is templated that way. Um, so copy and paste, fill this out. At the end, make sure that you write end of package. That's because when it's in the teleprompter, the anchor sitting there ready to read their next script, and they need to know when, they, when the package is going to stop and when they're going to start again. So end of package is also important to include in there. Um, that's a reporter package because it has capital letters, it has reporter track. If you don't want to do reporter packages in this class, you do not have to. You can do NAT packages, which means you won't record your voice at all. I won't see your face. It'll just be a NAT package, which is formatted the same way at the beginning, soundbite, but then there's no reporter track. It's just soundbite after soundbite after soundbite after soundbite. So it's just a string of soundbites that you have to be really good at doing the interview for because you want to make sure that they've said everything that you need to say. Um, oftentimes, if you think you want to do a NAT package, but then you come back and you listen to the sound and it's not cohesive, it's not complete, you might want to do reporter track in there to round out the story and to add extra facts that you need. But I'm fine with you guys doing that packages if you don't want to put your voice on camera. Um, does everybody understand what a package is? We'll look at some examples about here in a second. Okay, so the next biggest is called a donut. The donut is the anchor intro. Sometimes it has a reporter live shot, then the package, then the reporter live shot, and maybe a Q&A with the anchor. So it's a whole big thing. The package is inside the donut. Here's an example of what that looks like in EMPS. So as a producer, I put this script in the, in the EMPS system. Let's say this is an 11 p.m. show. It's about a fire truck accident. Um, and I put a set up video at the beginning because it's really good video. And I want to really, like right off the bat, this is my lead story. I want to show people what it looked like. So Keith has a stinger that says, new tonight, or something, whatever it's branded. And there's a video that he just reads for 15 seconds, that's it. Then it comes out to a two shot of Keith and Stacy sitting at the anchor desk. And then they read the lead. So this is where the word lead means more than one thing. The lead could be the first sentence in a VO, or the first sentence in a, in a VOSAT pro, or the lead can be your anchor lead. So you see this is lead in. That's the anchors preparing to toss to the reporter. So it means several things. This is also the lead story, which means it's the first story. Sorry, everything means three things in TV, which is frustrating. But you'll get there, which is why we repeat this several times throughout the semester. I just want to show you this first so that I, as we start building there, you understand how it looks. So that if somebody, if you're working, even if you're a production assistant or a floor director, you need to know how to read this and you know how to understand what this means 
and we will do this for the rest of the semester. Um, so let's say we go to Two Shop, Ethan Stacy. Then this is a stinger. Let's say it says live on it. Let's go live to Peter. He's out in the field to talk about the fire truck accident. And then here's Peter live, standing there, ready to go. Hey, I'm out to the place wherever this happened, blah, 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 for like a couple sentences. And then we go to his package. And the package plays for one minute, 20 seconds. It's one cohesive thing, lots of sound bites, his recorded track. And then we come back out to Peter standing there ready to go to be like investigators trying to figure out what happened. And then Stacy in a double box asks him some questions. And then she says, okay, well, we'll keep you updated on Twitter. And we'll post it online. We'll let you know when we find out something new. That's a donut. It's the whole thing. Mm. Um, and the only difference between your scripts is that, so you have your slug up top always, is you've added an anchor lead before you get to the package. So this is your anchor lead in, which is what we're going to write on Wednesday in class. So don't feel stressed about having to do it ahead of time. We'll do a lead ins in class on Wednesday. Um, this is your anchor lead, then the package exactly the way we showed the formatting earlier. The only difference here is that there's anchor talking here, and then an anchor talking here. You can get extra credit in these assignments before the donut assignment if you write a donut script instead of just a regular package script. And I'll say this many times so that you all understand what I'm saying. Because I didn't understand at first, it sounds like a foreign language. Um, so let's look at it, because I think it's easier when you watch it and you see like what it actually is in real life. So let's take a look at this, and I'll stop it, and you identify what story form we're watching. So this is the show open that we're going to watch first. Right now on Break 38. Dramatic new video of the police raid of El Chapo's. What was that? So it was a VO. So it had an anchor or an announcer reading, but you couldn't see them. You saw a video on top of them. So it was a VO right off the top. So there you go. What are those sounds? Yeah, it's a SOT. So in my script, first I wrote VO, then I wrote the announcer track, then I wrote SOT. So picture what the script is looking like as we're watching this. So this is a SOT because it's a nap sound of gun of gunshots. Now new reports reveal the Mexican drug lord was captured because he reached out. What is that? A VO. It's a voiceover. Because you're hearing the announcer or the anchor read, and there's video or pictures covering the whole screen. Up to celebrities to produce a movie about his life. An actor shot him is caught in the middle after traveling to Mexico for a secret interview. One of music's most unique and iconic singers. Block. What are we watching? It's still a video. Good. It's just battle with cancer. What's that? It's a sot, yeah. Now David Bowie is being remembered on social media tonight. Then, a clerk shoots a robber in the head. What we're now learning tonight about this developing story. News Channel 8 at 8 begins now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jack Holloway. And I'm Josh Benson. Thanks for being with us tonight. Well, he's considered one of the world's most powerful drug lords with two... What are we watching? Voiceover, VO. And breaks under his belt. The El Chapo story sounds like a screenplay. And now it looks like that's exactly what he wanted. A biopic project he'd been planning for a while. Even though he was a wanted man, he agreed to a secret interview with one of Hollywood's biggest stars, Sean Penn. Well, tonight, Penn is announcing that he has nothing to hide. Sorry, pop quiz. What's this called? Two shot. Two shot. Yeah, so my run down this is two shot. He dismissed criticism over the interview with a fugitive. And now Martin Savage joins us live from Mexico to explain his intriguing. So these are called double boxes or alt boxes, but they're boxes. So in the in the rundown when we saw Peter was in boxes, this is another one. They're just boxes. So they're tossing to um, another reporter who in this case was in Mexico, but he was he was live. So and then also Martin just to add, just so that you let's see how much time we have. 
we have a little bit of time, just so you understand kind of more about how TV works. So uh, many TV stations um, pay CNN. CNN isn't just a station on TV where you watch people, pundits, talk for hours. CNN is a mega media company corporation that um, also owns like it's Time Warner. They also own HLN, also own other stations. What this is, is a CNN reporter who also reports for HLN, who I paid to be live in my show that night. So I heard about the El Chapo thing and I was like, this is huge news. I want that to be my lead story. Are there any reporters in Mexico covering the story? And I found out that CNN was doing that. So I said, hey, I'll pay you for him to be my reporter tonight. And so we paid them a fee and then we set up a live shot. So he has a big satellite truck and we've connected our satellites together so that now he's our, he's in Mexico reporting for us that night. So because I was the producer here, I would talk to his producer and we would decide, okay, what do I want? What does he have? Does he have a basic script that he could send me so that I can expect what to, um, what he's going to say? Um, sometimes it's just a straight live. He's just standing there talking. So I knew that he didn't have a package, so he's just going to stand there. But I have video, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my people to cover it with video while he's talking there. He's just standing talking. And then sometimes you set up a question and answer. So I'll tell his producer, hey, do you ha does he have a question he wants us to ask him? Because I don't want to ask him a question he doesn't know the answer to. We need to look like we're on the same page. They don't want to ask him something, have him be like, I don't know. Right? So you, it's all planned. It's all kind of scripted. Um, but I think, well, watch this. I'm trying to remember if this is what happened here. Um, the delay was so big because of it's in Mexico, satellites are far. I mean, sometimes there's mountains and sometimes the delay is really big so that it's too much time between what I say and then what he hears and the response. So in the middle of this, I think I said, no, let's stop with the Q&A and we'll just tell him goodbye. And I'm on the phone with his producer saying the delay is too bad. Let's just cut the Q&A and let's just say thank you because you don't want him ask my anchors asking him a question and then at five seconds later him answering it and going back and forth like that it just it gets a little awkward so as the producer in the moment you have to be able to be like making those changes okay so let's watch the rest of this thank you for joining us here tonight what do these new details mean for sean penn and for el chapo So this is when I found out the delay was bad. I was like, oh, the delay is bad. So as he's talking, I'm on the phone with his producer saying, let's cut this Q&A. But I'm also listening to what he's saying. As a producer, I'm listening to what he says, because I have video that I anticipate he's going to talk about. So I'm going to shout at my director, hey, put the mugshot up, put the mugshot up. And I have that in my thing. And then in a second, I'll be like, oh, put that other video up. Well, depending on what the I reporter is saying. The whole song is that there's a Mexican hacker that's involved as well. And then on top of that, you've got the American actor, Sean Penn, who's playing the role of a journalist. And then there's El Chapo, the most wanted man. And in October, all three essentially came together in this clandestine interview situation. Part of it was to talk about maybe a movie on El Chapo. The other part was the article for Rolling Stone. Mexican authorities say whatever it was. It was key to tracking down El Chapo. But remember, October to January is a large gap of time. And that's when that raid, the daring raid, went down last year. So week. now I'm telling my directors, get the raid video up, get the raid video up, and they're going to get it now. And conducted that incredible raid. There were six people that were taken into custody, five that were killed. It was room for room fighting. That's helmet camera video you're looking and at. And he has no idea. I'm and showing this. I've to told them I plan on it, but he can't see my key. He can't see what I'm hearing. It's all kind of faked <laughs> a little bit. Martin, thank you for joining us live tonight from Mexico. For more developments on this story and breaking news alerts right to your phone, download the free News Channel 8 app at the App Store. Okay, so that whole thing, when I put this in the script, from the very beginning of them saying this hello, this intro thing here, excuse me, here, when they started talking about it, until they said, thanks so much, goodbye. What if, in my script, in my rundown, what would this be called? The whole entire thing, a donut. Yeah, because it's the whole thing. So you usually start your show, if you can, with a donut, because it's big, it's your lead, you want it to be produced big. 
So let's just watch a couple more seconds and see if we can identify other stories. News alerts right to your phone. Download the free News Headline app at the App Store. We designed your side tonight to make sure you and your children are safe. A scary start to the new semester for one USF student. She was attacked in broad daylight on campus. It happened while she was unloading her car in a parking lot near the university's Greek village. Meredith Blair joins us now live from the university's main campus in Tampa. So Mary, this is a very terrifying ordeal for that young woman. Yeah, it certainly was. Good evening to Jen. Out of all of the places on campus, so she's going to do her stand up, her live reporter stand up, and then she's going to toss to her own package. So this is a package. One of their own was attacked. People because you can hear her reporter track and you hear on a Saturday thought. afternoon. This is her reporter track, like her VO, and that's all reported ahead of time. Campus in Tampa. When a man so this whole thing is a package. Asking where he could buy an umbrella. She began giving directions to the USO. So this goes on for a while. Sound bites, VO, sound bites, VO, until her package is done. Um, so just for the sake of time, I'll fast forward through that. Um, she does a bridge stand-up, which is stand-up in the middle of the package, and that's taped ahead of time. And then once her package is done playing, she'll do a stand-up again at the end, which is a live tag stand-up. And I will say many, we will watch many newscasts until all of these words make sense. Um, and then once this is done, I just want to give you another example of another story form here. It's definitely a good reminder right now to be aware of your surroundings as students and everyone heads back to school this week. He did what he had to do. Those are the words we're hearing tonight about. What's this monitor called? The BAM. The BAM. That's an easy one. It's not North 22nd monitor. Street. They what are we watching? tried to rob the clerk with a knife. Witnesses saw him try to go around the counter. Yeah, we're watching and that's a video. The clerk pulled out the gun and shot him. Now, we spoke to the clerk's brother who rushed to the store after he heard what happened. Uh, the guy, according to this morning. What's this? A sot. Well, so far we haven't heard an update on the robber's condition, but that shooting Continue remains video. under investigation. Right now we're working with... Okay, so quick, what did Josh just do? From the very beginning, here, to the end, what was that whole story form called? A Vosavo. Right. So this is a Vosavo. He started with a BAM, he had VO, then there was a SOT, then there was continued VO, and then the story was over. That was a VO SOT VO. Now let's get back to Jen's story. Google face charges after he was shot by a homeowner in Pinellas County. Investigators tell us 29-year-old Jacob Decimal refused to leave. Then attacked the homeowner who found him in a backyard barn. That homeowner, 69-year-old Wayne Nundy, served as a Marine during Vietnam and is proud of it. He was in the Marine. Okay, so Vo sought. And then we have a bunch of other stories, but since we're out of time, keep watching the rest of this and try to identify story forms. Try to see if you can see some VOs, some readers, some other things. And throughout the course of the semester, we'll continue to build on this so that you are 100% prepared to produce your own newscasts before we're done <laughs> with the semester. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, again, this is on our website, so you can refer back to that.